tomorrow. Preston. Are you gonna say anything? No, I just no, really gonna say Steve. <laughs> <laughs> And, and actually it turned me into a slightly different footballer as well because I'd always been a main, if you want, the main striker. Yeah. And then sort of 10 games in I was, if you want, the second striker. Yeah. Uh, assisted and, so, I mean, ideal scenario, wasn't it, in the end? But maybe not how Gary had intended it. No. And then, I mean, how did the players feel like mid midway to this season when Neil McDonald came in? Because the style of play changed to Let it know why. We had a bit of a, well, Neil came in and we went to sort of a three-man central midfield, which actually changed things around a little bit. Um, I seem to recall the Cardiff game, I can't remember if it was New Year's Day or Boxing Day or whatever, and I found myself on the sideline because we went with a different formation. We ended up winning the game 5-1, I think, something like that. Yeah, 5-0. Five nil. Five nil. Um, and it just provided an extra edge, if you want, and gave us an extra... I mean, you, well, you see it now with the squad rotation. You can't survive with just 11 players anymore. Um, and if you, if you then move on, we, we ended up... Um, Kevin Kilbane obviously came and played a more bigger part towards the end of the season. Paul Birch arrived, God rest his soul, um, and played a big part at the end of the season as well. So lots of different things happen during the season. You can't predict of what the starting lineup is going to be every week. Um, so it, it added something else, it gave us something else in terms of the formation and the team, and flexibility as well. Um, I think I think Kevin played, to the, I think we played that way for three games and then went back to a slightly different formation with Kevin in the middle and Graham Atkinson I think was on the sideline for a little while then he came back in and just development of teams. Great team. What was it what was it like Steve that that last game when he scored in front of the town and um, against Exeter full house that, a deep deal. I've, I've got some I've got some fantastic memories. Um, and I've also got in terms of the second season when I started and I was a leading scorer in the whole of the football league absolutely amazing memories and had we not had I not got injured at Bristol uh, whatever it was September the whatever I think my family and myself we would still be living in Lancashire now because we enjoyed our two years so much oh, wow. having said all that you get injured situation changes Kurt Nogan comes in um, and things move on yep yep um, and things move on um, and I'm very happy now being back where I was brought up in the East Midlands um, all the things that happened in some ways happened for the best even though I'm still disappointed I'm not yeah. living up there and still not part of it because yeah. um, I, I was in a I was in a fantastic position all of a sudden I'd worked hard during the close season um, scored two against Crew, scored three against Wigan um, goals against whoever and seven in five games Whoa, what's going wow. on here <laughs> and then one one tackle about two minutes into the game at Bristol and really that was my season over with yeah. Um, yeah, I was hoping I was going to be back by Christmas but then needed another operation and so you then playing catch up with everybody else um, but yeah amazing that, that last game yeah when I that goal say. he drove it into the roof of the net yes yeah. and my mum's still got the picture on her wall yeah I've got it of me celebrating in front yeah. of the town end. yeah I've got that um, wait Addy do you think you had a great understanding with Andy Savile did you read his game and being a left footer wasn't he you left he was right it was, I don't know it just just happened yeah. um, almost instantly yeah. and then maybe it was made better by the fact that we shared a room on every yeah. away trip yeah. Yeah. We, we just, just sort of knew understand. where each other was going to be instantly so, so do you believe that strikers need a, a 
can form an understanding the more games you play with each other. I do. I, I, because our manager, Alan Irving, was chopping and changing his strikers all the time. And right. I don't think that helps them, does it? The, I, I, I think the game has changed a little bit, and I think what's happened... I was talking to uh, about this particular topic this morning to, to somebody I know within football, working in the East Midlands, and yes, go back to sort of mid 80s um, and early 90s and what have you strike partnerships were key yeah. and how two players play together was the difference between now you look at the likes of Chelsea who play give or take with one up front yeah. you look at the likes of Arsenal who play with one up front and it's not so much of a hard and fast rule anymore. No, it's not, is it? But a club at our level, Preston, and we scored six goals from Oct- uh, sorry, seven goals from October the twentieth to right up to Boxing Day, which basically cost Alan his job. Yeah. You know, and he was rotating his strikers every other game. You know, do you think strikers will get frustrated with that? Because you certainly they need a run of games, don't they? But it was it was a different striking partnership every game. I, I, I know what you're saying, yeah, but if, as if, a f- if things aren't quite going how you want them to go then then a manager looks to change something um, and and rotate it round and try something else and then it doesn't quite happen again and, and it's a little bit of frustration build builds up I, I, I watched the game on Saturday and um, I thought Chris Jones did all right up front but then you need to do something else so he put the other two strikers yeah, yeah. on and um, you end you end up then with a big rotation and actually most of the teams that are successful are the ones yeah, that are yeah Rely yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you want uh, a settled 16 that rotate only occasionally. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's ideally, yeah, that's what, yeah. But then you can't always guarantee that uh, every every squad now needs to be 20, 23 players mm. to see through a season. Mm. It's frightening, isn't it? Yeah.